Now let's talk about another form of logging based recovery called redo logging. Here, redo logging implements the no force and no steal strategy for buffer pool management. In redo logging, we have the same type of log records as undo logging. The only difference is that for the update log record, where instead of storing the previous value for a particular data element, we actually store the new value that it is going to write. We will see why that is the case in a second. The idea behind redo logging is actually very similar to undo logging, except that at recovery time, instead of undoing all the transactions that are incomplete, we actually redo the actions of all transactions that were committed instead. Meanwhile, we leave all the uncommitted transactions alone and don't touch them. And like undo logging, we also have a single rule to abide to when it comes to redo logging. If a transaction modifies a data element X, then both the update record and the commit record for that transaction must be written to the disk before the dirty data page itself. This is the no steal policy we discussed earlier. In other words, the dirty data page is written later than the transaction commit record. This is essentially write ahead logging as we have discussed. Now, let's use the same example from before and see how redo logging works. Here, we have the same transaction that reads and writes to A and B. Notice that the dirty pages are actually written back to the disk after the commit record has been written to the log. Suppose the system crashed after the commit record has been written to the disk. How do we recover from here? In this case, we will recover by redoing the effects of the transaction since the commit record has been written to the disk. Hence, this transaction is actually considered to have been committed. So we recover by writing the new values of the data elements A and B to the disk. And we know the new values because the log entries already tell us what they are. Now, what happens if the system crashed before the commit record actually made it to the disk? Well, since the commit record has not been written to the disk, the transaction is considered to be incomplete. And since we are doing redo based logging, we actually don't need to do anything here because none of the dirty pages have actually made to the disk yet. Now you see why we must first flush the commit record to the disk before the dirty pages. Again, this is the principle of write ahead logging, which implements the no steal policy as we have discussed earlier. Now, how do we do recovery with a redo log? After the system crashes, again, we run the recovery manager. For each transaction T, we need to decide whether it is completed or not. As in the case of undo logging, if we have seen both start and commit, or both start and an abort, then we consider the transaction to be completed. Otherwise, it is in process and therefore is incomplete. And we need to read the log from the very beginning Likewise, we'll talk about how to fix this problem of needing to read the entire log with something called checkpointing. So, recovery based on a redo log starts by first scanning the entire log to identify which transactions have committed. In the, in the example here, T2 is the only committed transaction. So only actions from T2 need to be redone. Notice that it is important that we read from the very beginning of the log as we recover. For instance, if there are transactions that wrote to the same data element, we must respect the order of the writes and redo them in that order. Otherwise, we will end up with the wrong value on the disk after recovery. So in this case, for instance, 
since the only transaction that has committed is T2. So therefore, as we scan the log forward, when we see an update record for T1, we don't need to do anything. Whereas if we see an update record for T2, as in this case here, we will now write the new value V2 to the disk. And the same process goes on until we have processed the entire log. So in undo logging, 30 pages must be written to the disk before the commit record. That is because if the commit record is in the log on the disk, then we will consider the transaction to have committed and we won't undo its writes during recovery. On the other hand, for redo logging, the dirty data pages are written to the disk after the commit record. And that is because we only redo the actions from transactions that have been committed. And in summary, undo logging has the advantage that it requires less memory than redo logging. And that is because we can write the dirty data pages as soon as they are produced by the transaction. And we don't need to wait for the entire transaction to commit. However, it also has higher latency because all the dirty data pages have to be written to the disk before we will write the commit record. On the other hand, we use more memory in redo logging because we must accumulate all the dirty data pages in memory until the commit record is written to the disk. However, it has lower latency as we do not need all the data pages to be written to the disk before committing to the transaction itself.